downward pressure of whatever this is that we're going through. And you look with disdain and sadness as you see people you know become quislings, you see them revealed as cowards, you see them going along with a new, new thing, which is clearly a poisonous thing, a silly thing, you know, saying things you know they don't believe because they want to keep their jobs. If there's a single person in this room who hasn't seen that through George Floyd and COVID and the Ukraine war, raise your hand. Oh, nobody, right, you all know what I'm talking about. And you're so disappointed in people. You know, you are, and you realize that the herd instinct is maybe the strongest instinct. I mean, it may be stronger than the hunger and sex instincts, actually. The instinct, which again is inherent to be like everybody else and not to be cast out of the group, not to be shunned, that's a very strong impulse in all of us from birth. And it takes over, unfortunately, in moments like this, and it's harnessed, in fact, by bad people in moments like this, to produce uniformity. And you see people going along with this and you lose respect for them. And that's certainly happened to me at scale over the past three years. I'm not mad at people, I'm just sad, I'm disappointed. How could you go along with this? You know it's not true, but you're saying it anyway? Really, you're putting your pronouns in your email? You're ridiculous. So for every 10 people who are putting he and him, him in their electronic JP Morgan email signatures, there's one person who's like, no, I'm not doing that. Sorry, I don't want to fight, but like, I'm not doing that. It's a betrayal of what I think is true. It's a betrayal of my conscience, of my faith, of my sense of myself, of my dignity as a human being, of my autonomy. I am not a slave. I am a free citizen, and I'm not doing that. And there's nothing you can do to me to make me do it. And I hope it won't come to that. But if it does come to that, here I am. Here I am. It's Paul on trial. Here I am. Um, by the way, Tucker's going to be the keynote this weekend at AmpFest. We want everybody to get there. Tucker's going to have the major address. He's the keynote. Tucker, your friend and colleague, Andrew Breitbart, I always, my years knowing you guys, both you guys were both warriors, but upbeat, optimistic. The Sunlit Uplands is right there. I notice, and maybe there's the heritage speech and a couple others you've given, it's not just a simple, a different gravitas. There's something now dark in these speeches that that is not like the Tucker Carlson I remember. What What is that? These, these, this, and I think you've done three or four in a row now over the last six months that have this central thesis to it. W what is that? Well, it's a r reflection of uh, what I see, which is darkness all, all around us. And it's not explicable in conventional political terms, even in human terms. There's something else going on. I don't pretend to understand it, um, but it's unmistakable. I, I, and I probably should leaven those speeches with the other observation, which is the upside. You know, if 95 percent of the people you know have decided to repeat lies, there's 5 percent who refuse. And those turn out to be the best people the most honest people, also the most interesting people um, in the country. And so I would say, you know, and I should always say this, that the last four years has been so distressing as you watch, the, well, I watch the country I grew up in destroyed, um, but it's also been, and lost so many friends, and some people won't talk to me anymore, and et cetera, et cetera, everyone watching knows the feeling. But I've met so many other people who I just think are the finest people I've ever met. And so the depth, the richness of my personal relationships has just has just really um, improved. It's incredible. Uh, you know what I mean? So like as disappointed as you are with most people, you're even more impressed by the people around you. That's how I feel about the people who I work with, the people in my family. My family's never been closer. I mean, evil is counterbalanced by its opposite. That is kind of, a, it's almost a physics principle. It's certainly a spiritual principle. And I think the opposite wins in the end. The goodness wins in the end even, but you know, there's gonna be some suffering between here and there, obviously. But I mean, I take great delight in the people around me every single day. And I, and I should say that I'm almost always in a good mood. You know, but I am when I think about the future, particularly what's happening with immigration, I'm very concerned about that. I don't think you can let in tens of millions of people, young men, and then try to usher them into the military 
um, and see that as not ominous. It's very ominous. I mean, what is that exactly? Um, and I think, I think it's very dark. And I don't fully understand what it is, but I think of all the things we should be paying attention to, we should be focused on that. The idea that you let in, you know, you millions of people from Africa and Latin America and give them automatic weapons in your own country. I, I you know, we should think about that, and we should be very afraid of that. When you talk about that, you've been the one guy from Spain to Brazil to Argentina. You've been the person that's gone out and been the connective tissue to Hungary multiple times. Is, there, is this a global phenomenon, not just in this country? And do you see a fight back when you go to Spain and see Vox, when you go to Hungary and see Orban, when you see what's happening in Argentina? I, I do. I mean, of course. And I'm struck, and I, I mean, you were on this before anyone I knew, uh, and seeing the connections. I mean, Brexit, in, in fact, it was your analysis of Brexit that really changed my mind on a lot of things. To me, it was like the sort of sad, declining country my ancestors came from, England, which basically no longer exists. And I didn't pay attention to it, and but you did, because you saw what I now see, which is that all of this is very similar. It's not identical. Different countries have, of course, histories and cultures and languages that are different, but um, the theme is the same, and that is the end of democracy, an oligarchy by, you know, a group of unelected people um, who, you know, have most of the power and are trying to end uh, democracy, and democracy simply defined is, you know, giving political power to the majority, uh, and they don't have any left. So, yes, of course, there is... You know, there's a thread that connects all of these. I will say Hungary is very different in that Orban has power. He runs the country. And um, almost none of these other countries have a situation like that. So Hungary really is, uh, is the place to look for what the U.S. could be. And by the way, last thing I'll say, Hungary is not a radical place at all. It's not a right, you know, right-wing biosphere or something like that. It's America 1988 or something. I mean, it's totally recognizable. It's moderate. Their opposition voices are not only allowed, but are prominent. It's, it's kind of the democracy you want to live in. It has a freer media than we do. So the idea that it's some right-wing hellscape or something is like insane. And I would just encourage anyone who's interested to go there. It's also a, a very pretty country with nice people and good food. But leaving that aside, it's like, if, if they think that is radical, if Ann Applebaum calls that Nazism or something, then Ann Applebaum <laughs> is the totalitarian, actually. So I'm serious. Exactly, as we think here. Um, Tucker, about the new company, how do people get to the content? You've got, obviously, legions of fans uh, that, that are here and at AmpFest on on uh, over the weekend, how do people? Where how do they get to the new company? Where do they go? How do they sign up? How do they become part of this? It sounds uh, incredibly exciting, and your big punchback, and and we know everybody's got your back. So how how do we all participate? You just go to TuckerCarlson.com. It's super simple. It's it's right there. Um, it's a subscription service. A lot of our stuff, well, all of our stuff to some extent will be. Um, premiering on X and then for the full you know for the full thing you go to the website a lot of our stuff on X will be the the full interview or documentary or whatever um, but again the point is to create a news company that challenges the monopoly and does it in a way that's enduring I mean on my timeline you know I'm a very short-term thinker actually and I'm just thinking I want to make it to December 2024 because I think it's a absolutely pivotal moment and a lot of things are going to happen and, and an almost unimaginable number of changes are going to take place between now and then, and I and I want to have a place where people can know what they are. You know, when, this is the problem with the with the immigration thing, and I won't be long, but in one sentence, it's completely changing the United States forever, and most people have no sense of that at all because they live in their in their world. I mean, I live in my world. I live in a really rural area that hasn't changed since I was a child very much. But America is changing and the place is just so big that you don't know. And so I want to chronicle that and I want to let people know what's happening. And if they're in, in favor of it, you know, this becoming a third world country, then okay, they're in favor of it, but they should at least know what's happening. TuckerCarlson.com, you can get the full everything, the documentaries, the interviews, your insights, other things. The Twitter aspect of it, for, for Twitter, what do people go there? You're going to have snippets on there, or they just go to TuckerCarlson.com, yeah, and, and that's where they and go. And the full thing. And yeah, I, yeah, I mean, every, I mean, the truth is none of this would be possible without that platform, without X. 
because the website formerly called Twitter, because it's the last big, you know, at scale platform in the world that allows free speech. The la I mean, there's nothing else like it. And so we've been really grateful. I, I would have, I don't know what I would have done if Elon hadn't just reminded me, hey, you could come here and post your stuff here. I've never taken a dollar from Elon Musk. I don't work for him. I, I don't plan to.